insurance. Would you all please rise and join me for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, tonight is Monday, August 27th. It is 8 p.m. This is the regular, uh, regularly scheduled town council meeting. Um, all members of council, except for uh, Ms. Lapellis, who is absent this evening, and Ms. Martin, who I understand is en, en route, but yeah, stuck in traffic. Uh, so hopefully she'll be able to make it this evening. Uh, Mr. Kellogg is also present this evening. Uh, are there any comments uh, or requests relative to the consent calendar? All right. Seeing none, I'll pass the consent calendar as printed. Uh, we have communications A through Q. I would ask that those be incorporated verbatim into the minutes, Madam Clerk. Moving on to public participation. Are there any members of the public who wish to participate uh, at this time? Going once. Twice, okay. Seeing none, I will close the first public participation session. Uh, we have one appointment this evening. That's Elizabeth uh, Edgerton. Mr. Rooney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to prove this is a uh, council appointment here. We I caught you off guard because I was moving so quickly. Yeah, I just... If you have it in front of you... You have one? Solid. Yeah, please. Oh, no, I have it. Okay. Uh, uh, I'd like to make a motion to appoint uh, Elizabeth Edgerton to alternate inland wetland citation officer. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. Motion by Mr. Rooney. Is there a second? Second. A second by Mr. Condon. Uh, discussion, Mr. Rooney. Uh, during the inland wetland meeting held on July 25th, 2018, the Inland Wetlands Commission determined that Elizabeth Edgerton uh, would be acceptable alternate inland wetland citation officer in case of absence or conflict of interest of the regular wetland citation hearing officer. The intent of the IWC recommendation is only to have an alternate hearing officer when the regular meeting officer is unavoidably not available. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. Any further discussion? No. All right, seeing none, I'll call for a vote on this appointment. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. Uh, we have no further appointments uh, this evening. We're going to move on to our action items. Uh, Town Council Committee on Finance, Education, Health, and Public Safety. Is there a report this evening on that committee? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have not met, but we will be meeting shortly. We have a lot going on with the space needs and the fire study and things of that nature. So we will probably be meeting, I would guess, within the next three weeks or so. Great. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. Moving on to B is the Town Council Committee on Planning and Zoning, Public Works, and Park and Recreation Matters. Does anybody have a report from that uh, committee or any of the subcommittee? Uh, Ms. Lapellis is absent, but um, I don't know if anybody else had anything to report. No, Mr. Chair, we don't have anything to report. Okay. Thank you, Mr. O'Rourke. Uh, C is the Town Council Committee on Legislative and Administrative Matters. Is there a report from that subcommittee? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we did just meet. Uh, much of what we discussed today will be brought up in tonight's council meeting. And then uh, we're also looking to um, tackle the blight ordinance uh, and, and blight definitions and process around blight, blight over the next probably couple of months, if not sooner. Okay, thank you, Mr. Reed. Um, moving on to item D, action item D, which is the Strategic Planning Committee. Is there a report from that committee? Strategic Planning hasn't met, but is scheduled to meet over the next two weeks. Great. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Uh, item E is the Inland <coughs> Building Committee. Do we have a report from that committee? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we did have a meeting that we canceled uh, through the summer session, and we have uh, some funding and things that we need to discuss, so there was, there was uh, reason to overlooked it for the last time, but uh, we will be meeting again in the next two weeks, I believe. Sure, thank you very much, Mr. Rooney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, action item F is the Fire Services Study Committee. Is there a report from that committee? The Fire Services Study is underway. They're revising the study, and they're going to meet with the Strategic Committee as well. So we're going to meet Thank you, Mr. Condon. Uh, and last but not least is item G, which is our first selections update. Mr. Kellen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, sorry, I've got some hard copies working their way down. Just a few things I want to talk about tonight. One was the um, my uh, Business and Industry Advisory Committee. Um, you probably have seen some, you may have seen some uh, press in this regard earlier, but I, since we have not 
Um, the council hasn't met in a while. I just wanted to formally uh, report that there were some recommendations that came out of that committee. Uh, primarily, uh, their, their initial concerns were over parking and expansion of staff level approvals and zoning matters. I did forward those comments to the Planning and Zoning Commission Chairman. He brought those to the full commission at their last meeting. I was at that meeting. We had some preliminary discussions, uh, but those, both those matters have been referred, forwarded and referred to the Planning and Zoning Regulations Subcommittee. I know they met this evening and it was on their agenda. I was, uh, unfortunately, I had to move to LNA meeting uh, while they were still in discussion, so I'm not sure how far they got. I'm sure they uh, will continue to deliberate on those items. Uh, second was, uh, pleased to report that the state of Connecticut has approved all of the, the six <coughs> programs that uh, this town has recommended for the Neighborhood Assistance Act program. Uh, so uh, I, I ha have issued a, pr a press release so we can get the word out. Uh, all those programs are eligible at a 60% credit level. So uh, any entities that have corporate tax liabilities uh, can apply between September 15th and October 1st through the state of Connecticut. I, we do have links on the website, and there's links available at the state site as well. Um, so we certainly would encourage that. It's a kind of a win-win for both the business that gets a tax break in the organization that, you know, or the program that receives uh, funding due to that incentive. And last but certainly not least, uh, as, uh, I had, uh, as I had committed to this council of having a, uh, further discussions on the concept of the performance pavilion, uh, in, on August uh, 1st, I noticed a public uh, meeting of myself uh, with the Parks and Rec chairman. And that meeting was held last week on the 23rd. We had uh, just over a dozen individuals in attendance, a lot of elected and appointed officials there to speak to issues around project organization, fundraising, oversight, the size and scope of the events, uh, the issues in regards to parking and noise and neighborhood and location of the structure. Um, I'm very happy, I think it was a very healthy discussion on, on several issues and a lot of uh, issues to consider. Uh, regarding organization and fundraising, uh, there were no individuals or organizations that came forward during that meeting uh, in regards to that effort. Um, there were a couple of issues that arose regarding uh, some certain issues that are kind of legal and regulatory questions that I will be referring to legal counsel, uh, but in terms of the overall concept, uh, as I said earlier, I have uh, referred that to the Parks and Rec, Rec Commission through the chairman and asked that they deliberate further and provide me some input and recommendations in regards to priorities and the strategic plan for Wolf Park. Great. And that is it for tonight. Mr. Thank chairman. you, Mr. Kellogg. Mr. Cummings. I was asked by uh, Councilwoman Lapellis to read something about the park. I read it the other day at the meeting, but now she wanted to read it to council for today's meeting. About the proposed pavilion, she had five points that she wanted raised. One, parks and recreation should have full control and responsibility for this facility. Two, we would need strict rules on security. What happens if extremist groups wanted to rent the pavilion? How would security be accomplished? Three, events can be, attract large groups of people. How would parking and transportation be implemented? Four, how would funding be accomplished? And five, the pavilion we now have works well, very well for the six musical events. And to her knowledge, there have been no problems. Why make a massive new pavilion? Submitted by any of the Okay. Thank you, Mr. Conner. <clears throat> Anything further, Mr. Keller? No, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to our one item of unfinished business this evening, which is the illicit discharge ordinance MS4 compliance. Uh, you have a copy of the uh, proposed ordinance as part of your packet. Um, and so, um, uh, basically looking for comments. Um, from council uh, this evening. As you may recall, uh, we had reviewed this once prior, uh, giving everybody an opportunity to uh, provide an in-depth review. Uh, and uh, it is back on our uh, agenda. It's anticipated that uh, we will call for a public hearing um, this evening on uh, the ordinance so that we can continue to move this down the road towards uh, approval. So with that, I'll open the floor up for questions. Mr. Kellogg, do you want to just uh, provide anything as uh, I, I guess I that you have in the past? I could certainly just kind of uh, briefly recap. Sure. Uh, the intent here is to be in compliant with the <coughs> State of Connecticut MS4 uh, uh, um, permit process. Uh, so to that, it, it is something that is derived from federal uh, law and regulation through the EPA. 
uh, but between the EPA and the state of Connecticut, um, it is essentially uh, an unfunded mandate that we have this ordinance and everything that goes with the MS4 process. Uh, I, this obviously has had um, extensive uh, review, uh, both by Mr. Schatzlein, our Lynn Wetlands agent, uh, and um, as well as our uh, land use attorney, Mr. Marino, uh, who have reviewed this and have endeavored to ensure that we meet the requirements under the federal and state law, uh, but are not you know, overreaching in, uh, in any regard. So that is uh, highly modeled after um, some of the, the um, basically a model ordinance, but we've certainly, uh, he's, he's ensured that it's got a Monroe uh, flavor to it, particularly as it involves uh, enforcement, you'll see things in there such as the ability to appoint the WPCA as uh, an, uh, an enforcement, are, uh, as part of the enforcement processes, which is something that I uh, specifically ask that we look into um, and um, have some flexibility there that would make it, uh, that would make it a little bit unique in that regard, but otherwise we're looking at, we're looking at compliance with the state requirements. Okay. Have there been any uh, amendments to the draft ordinance between the last time that we reviewed it and this evening? There have not. Okay. Uh, any further comments regarding the ordinance? And while we're at that, is there any objection to me calling for a public hearing this evening to move this forward? Just a consensus? No. All right. Um, while we're at it, um, we typically try to uh, call for public hearings and have those public hearings prior to our regularly scheduled council meetings. Um, prior to the um, commencement of the meeting this evening, we did discuss that our next meeting, 10th, which is Rosh Hashanah. Um, and um, I think I received a consensus from all council members that we didn't feel that it would be appropriate to hold a council meeting uh, on an evening of religious celebration so as not to, to ensure that we're not precluding anybody from attending uh, and providing comments. So it's our intention to move, um, adjourn that meeting on September 10th to September 12th, which is a Wednesday. Uh, and uh, with that in mind, uh, I'm going to call for a public hearing uh, on 9 12 uh, 18 uh, at 7, 7 o'clock p.m. And that gives us a little bit of flexibility should we uh, want to call for a public hearing on some other business that we have later this evening to also occur that evening at uh, in the 7.30 time slot. All right. So no objection. 7 o'clock p.m. for this um, for this ordinance. Um, if we move forward with our new business, uh, the other ordinances for the tax relief, that would be 7.30 in the regular meeting. We'll, council meeting will be at 8 o'clock. But right now we have 7 o'clock public hearing. Mr. Schatzlein. Um, I, I don't know if you want me at that public hearing, if mm -hmm. you like. Um, I have it in the weapons meeting that same night at the same time. Okay. Um, so I don't know. Um, to be, uh, I know it should be a public at the same time. 6.30? <coughs> too early? 7 to No, it'll be too early. Yeah, yeah. Too early. Perhaps, um, I don't think it would take very long for you to present. Maybe Inland Wetlands can adjourn for 10 or 15 minutes and... Yeah, okay. Um, I would say, too, if, if at all possible, could, could it be seven, then I could uh, maybe move the agenda around at Wetlands. So yeah, it, it is seven. That's what I said. Oh, it is it's seven? Seven yeah. o'clock. Yeah. yeah. And there's a seven, too, so I'll move the agenda around right. so I can do this. Yeah, Perfect. seven p.m. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Anything else? All right, so... 7 p.m. it is on uh, September 12th, 2018. Moving on to new business. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Before we move to new business, I just want to, uh, for the record, clarify, uh, I do see that Chalk Hill has been moved off of the old unfinished business. I wanted to be sure that that is because of its inclusion uh, and put it straight for the record uh, for people who read the minutes uh, as part of the discussion for, I believe it's item E, the municipal space needs in the new business. Cor correct. The, the understanding moving forward with Chalk Hill is that since that 
uh, process is well underway uh, and is there's an ongoing discussion. There will be an ongoing uh, determination as to the, the needs and includes Chalk Hill. We actually discussed that at uh, LNA this evening. Ms. Aguilar could bring that up. And so uh, the presumption is we will discuss Chalk Hill moving forward in conjunction with that study. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Uh, moving on to new business, item A is the <coughs> Fiscal Year 15 Emergency Management Performance Grant Resolution. Um, may I have uh, a motion to approve the following resolution of resolve that the Monroe Town Council may enter into with and deliver to the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection Division of Emergency Management and Homeland Security the notice of grant award contract and any and all documents which it deems to be necessary or appropriate pertaining to the FY15 DEMHS grant number 015E085A State Homeland Security Grant Program and be it further resolved that Kenneth M. Kellogg as first selectman of the town of Monroe is authorized and directed to execute and deliver any and all documents on behalf of the town of Monroe and to do and perform all acts and things which he deems to be necessary or appropriate to carry out the terms of such documents, including but not limited to executing and delivering all agreements and documents contemplated by such documents. So moved. Motion by uh, Mr. Maurer. Uh, is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Condon. Uh, and for introduction, I will uh, turn the floor over to you, Mr. Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So tonight, what, what we have before you in this regard is uh, really more of a matter of housekeeping. Uh, you'll see some correspondence that goes back from 2016 the, the state of Connecticut is in the process of finalizing their uh, and closing out this grant with the federal government. These grants run uh, in arrears uh, quite a bit, which is why they're still working on the fiscal year 15 grant at the state level, uh, because the, the federal government is literally, they, they work that, that far behind in some of those, these grant opportunities. Uh, the challenge that has arisen is that the state of Connecticut had contacted uh, Monroe, to advise that uh, they only had a, an executed cover page from former Selectman Vavrick. They did not have uh, the following, uh, I guess it's 30, uh, 30 plus or minus uh, one pages initialed. Um, they require the full set uh, in order to be compliant with the federal government. Um, they did not have anything on file. We were unable to find those those additional pages on file in town either, although we do have the cover page that they reference. So they require uh, a full set executed by me. In order to do that, we need a new resolution from this council to be provided to the state uh, that authorizes me to, to do that. So we're literally just trying to do some housekeeping so that this grant can be um, closed out and so that the state will have, can have the funds and disperse the funds accordingly. Great, thank you Mr. Kellogg. Uh, very straightforward. Any further comments, questions, discussion? Yeah. Seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor uh, and against, that motion carries 7 to 0. Just a quick update for Council. Ms. Martin just contacted me, told me that her flight is delayed. She doesn't uh, anticipate her being able to make it to Council. She just wanted to uh, apologize to the fellow Council members that it was her intention to be here, and she apologizes for not being here. <coughs> Uh, moving on to new business, item B is the DiCarlo and Dahl Municipal <coughs> Space Needs Assessment Contract. And then I have a motion to approve the following resolution. Resolved that Kenneth M. Kellogg, first elected to the Town of Monroe, is authorized to execute and deliver on behalf of the Town of Monroe the Professional Services Agreement and any associated documents by and between DiCarlo and Dahl Incorporated for the Municipal Space Needs Assessment. So I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Reed, second by Mr. Rooney. Um, again, uh, to introduce the uh, agreement, uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to acknowledge the Strategic Planning Committee, who was also uh, very much involved in this process. The process uh, involved, as you, you recall, um, actually goes back to, uh, to, I believe, when I was on strategic planning with council, and we talked about this conceptually, uh, certainly something I feel very passionate about, that we need to uh, really evaluate uh, the needs of our programs and the needs of our departments from a space perspective and match that up against what we do have available in our existing buildings, as well as Chalk Hill. <laughs> and. Uh, 
and get some uh, prof a professional assessment as well as professional recommendations on how we may create a plan for the future as, as regards to space goes. So through the SBC, uh, we went through an RFP process. Um, there was certainly significant interest. There were firms that were interviewed by SBC. Uh, the outcome of the SBC process was to recommend it to Carlo and Dahl for this, uh, for this uh, agreement. Uh, my office then engaged to Carlo and Dahl, and with the help of our town attorney, we negotiated um, the agreement that's before you, which is comprised of the a cover letter from the Carlo and Dahl, which really incorporates the scope of work, uh, as well as their standard terms and conditions, which is articulated in Schedule A. And then Mr. Uh, attorney Hayden has also drafted a uh, Monroe Terms and Conditions Schedule B, which takes uh, priority if there are any conflicts uh, anywhere else in the document. Um, you'll see it's laid out uh, in a way similar to we've, other studies we've done in this regard where it is a phased approach. We only commit to funding as we want to continue the project and as we think the, the project is worthy of going from phase one to phase two, et cetera. And it's structured that we do our assessment first prior to getting any conceptual ideas back for how we might solve the issue. And then if we want to go further, we can actually entertain of any solution we may choose to pursue. But it's entirely up to the town uh, as to how far we take it. Uh, we, it's literally a one step at a time approach. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Any um, questions, Mr. Reed? Uh, not a question, just a statement. This did go through l as well, and we had a few questions, and everything seemed to tick in time, and it's, I think it's a great, great plan. Any further comment or discussion? No, great. Comprehensive group, I think, as, out of all the presentations today, they will provide us the best resource for managing our space in town. So we look forward to their study. Yeah, the, only, the only comment I'll make, it was a pleasure being a part of the process through uh, SBC. I just want to commend uh, Mr. Condon and SBC for doing a, just a fabulous job with vetting the, um, uh, the bidders. Uh, I think it was a thorough discussion, well thought out, and uh, not an easy decision to make, but uh, uh, you know, relative to finances as opposed to work product and to really vet that mm -hmm. process. But I thought, you know, a really good example of uh, just cooperative uh, bipartisan government that uh, really got to the but I hope to be a, a, a really solid vendor for the, uh, for the town of Monroe. So good job there. Uh, any further discussion, Mr. Miller? Uh, I just want to give commendation to our council on uh, the terms and conditions that it has drafted for Monroe, I think are extremely thorough um, and cover a lot of issues that I think there were some holes before we had the terms and conditions added. So I think you covered <coughs> those holes within there. So I just want to give some commendation there because that really did bring the Hold the agreement together. I agree. Lawyers don't get enough credit, so thank you, Mr. Mount. Uh, any further discussion? No. All right, seeing I'll call for vote. All those in favor and against, the motion carries 7 to 0. Moving on to new business item C is the 754 Main Street commercial tax abatement uh, application. Uh, as you know, uh, we prior to tonight's meeting, we had uh, the public hearing condition precedent did uh, take place at uh, 7.40 p.m. There was no comment from the public other than a comment from the applicant, Mr. Singlack, uh, who was also present this evening. Uh, before you, you have the application um, uh, by Mr. Singlack and the recommendations of uh, the uh, committee, the review committee, which recommended um, a, uh, an assessment uh, percentage discount of 15% in year one, 10% in year two, and 5% in uh, year three. Uh, and uh, LNA then subsequently reviewed the application and uh, essentially uh, endorsed the, uh, the application but did not make any specific recommendation as to the uh, percentages uh, so what we have before us this evening, before I actually call for a, uh, um, ask for a motion, is I just wanted to have a discussion uh, in advance uh, amongst council. As I said, Mr. Singlack is present um, for questions uh, of council. And um, uh, uh, once the discussion, I think, is ready for a vote, I'll ask for a motion. And uh, we'll have formal discussion on the pending motion. But uh, because we've not really uh, considered 
the uh, actual application or the percentages. Uh, what's before us is simply a recommendation, and it's up to us to move that forward or not. So we should have the authority to make the adjustments on the percentages should we think that it's appropriate one way or the other, uh, approve uh, any such uh, uh, recommendations, uh, or obviously deny the application if it shouldn't pass. So with that, I'll open the floor up to uh, discussion. Um, of members of council, questions? Uh, Mr. Kellogg, if you want to may, say something. May I just say one? Well, I sure. just want to make sure the council is aware that in the package, uh, right behind the application, the, this, the abatement eligibility calculation, I just want to be uh, clear that that was prepared by our assessor, assessor Mr. Feldman. Um, and then after the minutes, uh, obviously those are just uh, records from the, uh, the land records, the building permit to support that, and the engineering design. But I just want you to be aware of where those documents came from. And for the record, statutory, it is in the document that uh, uh, Mr. Kelly referenced, but I think the maximum uh, eligibility is 20%, uh, and that would be three years, is that correct? Yeah, it's 20% max three years, based upon the, based upon the improvement of Correct. Okay. Right. right. We are, right, our uh, ordinance is a sliding scale based upon the value of the Correct, right. right. So with that said, uh, any comments, questions, discussion before we call for a motion? You said 20%. 20, the, the maximum, the, our ordinance provides for a maximum of 20%. Uh, based upon? Yeah, three, based years, on three years, right, based so, upon the sliding scale, and it has to do with the expenditures. The recommendation is 15, 10, 5. Right. And, and again, the, the considerations that are taken into consider are, that are con that's a terrible sentence, but the considerations that um, were reviewed basically um, by both committees were the impact on the community, um, jobs, uh, business, improvements, um, uh, investment in the community essentially. And so that, those, that's the threshold. And then from there, um, the, uh, the review has to do basically as to, uh, you know, subjectively what the committee felt uh, was an appropriate abatement based upon not only this application, but uh, to be honest, considering prior applications that it had recently. So that's what the committee felt was uh, appropriate for this particular um, this particular improvement. Mr. Four. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just one idea. I, I think the, the committee's assessment is appropriate. Uh, one idea of something because of the fact that uh, the, the application states that they would like to use the abatement towards improve, uh, up, paving upgrades and displays that haven't begun. I don't know if one we can or if it might be an idea that instead of doing 15, 10, 5, do 20, 10, 0 uh, to uh, allow for some of the money to be abated earlier on in the process to allow for those upgrades. We're not talking about a large amount of money. I don't know how much of a difference that would make. Just one idea to uh, possibly allow those upgrades to happen at a faster pace while still having the same approximate effect uh, of an abatement. Thank you, Mr. Maurer. That's exactly the discussion I was hoping to have this uh, evening, so that's good uh, Good discussion. Anybody else? Is this precedent setting, or is this sliding scale in line with what our charter and LA have recommended? Um, it's certainly not precedent setting. I can tell you the prior applications, uh, everyone is considered on an individualized basis. So, um, no, I don't, I, I would not consider this to be precedent setting. I don't think there's, I, I think every application is independently unique. Okay. <laughs> going, through the, uh, going through the application and didn't notice or see anything that was, uh, you know, out of place with regards to this typical uh, uh, abatement. Mm -hmm. I don't see any, any reason why we shouldn't go forward with it. Okay. Anybody else? Any, any, anybody else? Uh, so is anybody prepared to make a motion as to the percentages um, that uh, they want council to consider? Again, the recommendation is 15, 10, 5, not binding on council uh, at all. It's certainly within our prerogative to do what we think is appropriate. Mr. Mauer suggested one. Uh, alternative, uh, are there any other suggestions before we ask for uh, a motion, formal motion? Well, the only reason I would maybe ask us to second reconsider adjusting it is the work that was done with the various committees and LNA and so on and so forth. So we're sitting up here uh, potentially 
looking at uh, juggling these numbers um, here at the last moment, I'm not sure that that should override what the previous work that's already taken place. Fair enough. Mr. Uh, and uh, I, I don't disagree uh, with that sentiment. Uh, like, I, like I was stating before, we're simply, like, we're not talking about huge numbers. I don't think it would make a huge difference either way. And if uh, council is more uh, inclined to go with the initial uh, percentages as proposed, I would certainly have no objection to that and would certainly be in favor of that vote as well. I would say if it doesn't make that much of a difference that we should probably take the recommendation of the committees and, uh, and, and, and such and, and, and town vote for the town uh, planners uh, have already uh, dictated. Presented to those committees here. So if it was going to make any difference, if you want to speak to or whether the percentages make any difference or you're in, in line with what we originally presented. So for, for, for the record, the applicant doesn't seek uh, certain percentages, of course. I, I can speak for Mr. Singlack. He's, the, uh, his application, I think, inherently is seeking the maximum that he possibly can get from us. So um, uh, and he certainly, you know, humbly suggested that to us, as, you know, both in the public hearing and at the meetings, that he would appreciate any help that uh, the town is willing to give him for his investment in that community. So, Mr. Singlack, do you want to say anything at this time? I wish I would have looked at these numbers a little earlier in the process. So when we met separately, I probably would have pushed. Obviously, I went for the max, but I did like Mr. Mauer's idea because if you stop by the place right now, you can see live we are building displays as we're going. So most of the money will be going out. Uh, it's not a huge difference. So if you guys didn't change it, what you say? But if you did change it, yes, it would go a long way. In the second year in the building, it's it's tight. Mr. Chair, with that being said, with regards to the applicant's uh, testimony here <coughs> uh, and regarding the uh, splits, I would, I would uh, be open to reconsidering uh, recalculating the splits. Okay. Mr. Mayor, you make a motion at this time? I would uh, move to approve the application on a sliding scale basis of a, an abatement of 20% year one, 10% year two. 0% year three. Okay, motion by Mr. Mowers, there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Condon. Uh, discussion regarding the motion before council. Mr. Orr. As mentioned, uh, based on the testimony we just received from the applicant, um, I, uh, I agree we should move forward with that uh, revised uh, split. Anybody else? Um, I'll just mention, uh, I want to thank Mr. Singlack for his application, very professional throughout. Um, in my years, feels I want to say many, and I can probably say that this evening because Ms. LaPellis and Ms. Martin aren't here, so in my many years of, of being on council as the senior person up here now, um, I've seen many applications. Yours was very professional, you are uh, very forthcoming, uh, very humble applications. So I appreciate you being in community, making investment in Monroe. Um, I want to thank you for that, and I hope that everybody certainly patronizes your, uh, your store as much as possible. Um, with that said, any further discussion? But I would certainly support uh, Mr. Maurer's uh, tweet to the recommendation. I think it's appropriate, and uh, I think it's rewarding to uh, individuals who come to the community and invest in our community. But with that said, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Uh, Against. So motion carries seven to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Singlack. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Welcome Thank to Monroe. <laughs> Good luck. We will be. Less than a year now. We'll come back in less than a year. Okay, moving on to new business item D is the tie and bond agreement for the engineering services outfall MS4 screening. May I have uh, a motion to approve the following resolution? Uh, resolved that Kenneth M. Kellogg, for selecting the town of Monroe, is authorized to execute and deliver on behalf of the town of Monroe the engineering services outfall screening services agreement and any associated documents binding between tie and bond for the services to support MS4 compliance. Okay. Motion by Mr. Condon. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Maurer. Uh, for discussion purposes, I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you know from the ongoing discussions we have regarding MS4 compliance, uh, the, the next 
A uh, piece of the puzzle is to ensure that we are conducting the re required outfall screening uh, that, that must be done as part of that permit. We've had a process that this, uh, that the, actually was the prior council had uh, reviewed in terms of selecting time bond for all these services. Uh, Mr. Schatzlein has worked with them to <coughs> come up with a, uh, an agreement that has been uh, reviewed by our town attorney. Uh, so this would be the next, the next phase to ensure we maintain compliance uh, with MS4. And certainly Mr. Schatzlein is available if you have any questions as regards to the technical requirements that we must accomplish. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Any further discussion regarding this motion? Uh, seeing none, call for a vote. All those in favor and against, motion carries 7 to 0. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Thank you. Moving on to item E, transfer of funds regarding the municipal space needs assessment. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the following resolution? Uh, be it resolved that the following transfer from the general fund assigned fund balance Chalk Hill study to the Capital Reserve Fund be approved for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2019 from account number 1001-134003 uh, to the, uh, the fund account titled General Fund Assigned Fund Balance Chalk Hill. Chalk Hill study, uh, $100,000 from that fund transferred to account number 2300-140999 Capital Reserve Fund Operating transfers in, uh, and the description is to transfer $100,000 from the general fund assigned fund balance for a Chalk Hill study to the capital reserve fund operating transfers in. The intention of this transfer is to fund the majority of the municipal space needs assessment, which will include the Chalk Hill building, and further, uh, be it further resolved that the following transfer from the capital reserve fund assigned fund balance to the capital reserve fund committed fund balance municipal space needs assessment be approved for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2019 from account number 2300-134010, capital reserve fund assigned fund balance 105,000 to account number 2300-134999, capital reserve fund committed fund balance for the municipal space needs assessment. Uh, description to transfer and commit $105,000 from the capital reserve fund assigned fund balance to the capital reserve fund committed fund balance for the municipal space needs assessment. Probably make that motion. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Condon. <laughs> Is there a second? <laughs> second by Mr. Maurer. Um, discussion, I don't know, Mr. Kelly, if you want to say anything, it's obviously something. It's uh, pretty straightforward. So there was uh, funds <coughs> that were earmarked uh, in the past uh, for uh, municipal study related to Chalk Hill. And there was certainly several discussions anecdotally with Board of Finance about that being utilized for the municipal space needs assessment. Now that, that uh, we have that contract, as we all discussed tonight, we know the exact amount. Uh, so the, uh, the purpose here uh, is to, uh, is the technical and logistical transfer of the, the funds uh, into the municipal space needs assessment, uh, rather than just simply adding the $5,000 that we were short um, through the work of our finance director, he appropriately uh, identified that we should you know, transfer the 100,000 out and then transfer the 105,000 back in and recommit it. Just to be clear, since the prior uh, title of that uh, assigned fund balance was Shock Hill and we want it to be slightly broader, so we want to make sure that there's no confusion in that regard. Great. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Any further discussion, Mr. Maurer? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This was discussed at our finance meeting. Uh, the finance, uh, our board of finance felt that this was uh, not only an appropriate transfer, uh, transfer, but the appropriate way of doing it with transferring one out and one in. And there was clarification there uh, that I just want to make for the record, although the selectmen did a good job of explaining it, that this is an additional $5,000, not an additional $105,000. That the amount that had been set aside for Chalk Hill, we are utilizing that hundred thousand plus another five thousand as for the whole needs assessment. Precisely. Thank you. Um, and as Mr. Mauer stated, the condition precedent uh, it was that uh, is that this be approved by the Board of Finance and it was approved on Monday, August twentieth, two thousand eighteen, at their meeting. Any further discussion? All right. Seeing so no call for a vote. All those in favor. 
and against that motion carries seven to zero. So our last two items of business this evening were intentionally last because we wanted to keep this squid family hostage <laughs> uh, for all of our wonderful business. But for discussion, I'm assuming we're going to take F and G together. And I'll turn the floor over to Mr. Kellogg for a uh, discussion uh, regarding these two uh, ordinances, proposed ordinances. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I want to, uh, before I begin, uh, acknowledge the hard work of two individuals that assisted me in this endeavor. One is our assessor. The, our assessor, Mr. Feldman, Justin, uh, was very helpful uh, in all aspects of this. And uh, I extend him uh, a lot of thanks for helping out in this project. Uh, but I, I want a somewhat uh, unusual uh, component of tonight's discussion is I am very proud to introduce uh, a Massac High School student, Mr. Aaron, Aaron sorry, Squibb. Uh, Aaron was looking for a capstone project and I was humbled that he asked me to be his mentor in that regard. Uh, there were some things that I had been looking at uh, and wanted to tackle uh, in, in regards to veterans tax relief and I thought that was a, a good project for him to take on uh, because it required some research but also could be uh, kind of help him kind of go through the system of how things work in local government and see kind of the whole palette of, of bringing an ordinance uh, to fruition. So in that regard uh, we're going to tag team uh, our presentation here tonight. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and simple, so it was only 103 slides. <laughs> okay. Including the title slide? <laughs> <laughs> we sign off on the capstone afterwards? <laughs> that is your initial every I'm day. sorry? Uh, you know, we probably yeah, should. Uh, okay. So, Aaron, if you could just uh, state your name and address for the record. I'm Aaron Squibb of 31 Hunter Ridge Road in Monroe. Uh, so, there's, there's two things we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, one is our base veterans tax relief program, and the second is the Gold Star program. The first, uh, we'll talk about the base program, and there's some nuances uh, that are here, but we haven't actually looked at this ordinance uh, since 2003, uh, so we felt, I felt it was right uh, for review. Uh, and Aaron, if you want to talk a little bit about uh, what we researched in that regard. So what we researched is the current program in Monroe and how it compares to a similar program in other neighboring towns around us. And what we found is that Monroe is actually significantly, significantly lower in terms of what we offer as an exemption for veterans than our neighboring communities of such Newtown, Oxford, Shelton, and places like that. Um, so what, we've, what I've worked on and what we propose is increasing the exemption Monroe already currently offers to veterans while also implementing a new program that the state introduced called the Gold Star Relief Program, which in short offers tax relief to the families of a veteran who was killed or has gone missing in action. Um, some towns of similar size that have already uh, adopted this program are Milford, Middletown, Wilton, and Durham. And just, for, just so you know, Durham is the town of which we based our ordinance off of. So the, um, I'll just uh, jump in real quick. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the first uh, thing in a minute, but uh, one thing to know on the Gold Star program is this just became uh, a law recently, it was effective with the, uh, the, the last uh, grant list. So we would be, you know, obviously a few towns have, have jumped on it immediately, but we would be uh, right there behind them. I want to really acknowledge Mr. Feldman for recognizing that this option even existed. It was something that uh, I was focused on the first program, wanted to dig into that, and Mr. Feldman recognized, hey, there's another thing that we need to, that we can explore, and it's, it just it sounds like a, an excellent way to pay tribute uh, to a family that's made an ultimate sacrifice. So uh, as, uh, as Aaron mentioned, we did some analysis with neighboring towns, uh, and the first thing I'll, I want to talk about, and I'll let Aaron talk further, is that you'll see that the there's, there's two different concepts. One is uh, the state benefit where there are no income limitations at all. And then there is another section where there are income limitations which involves state benefits, local benefits, which then you get to your, your total. The, the, no, the no income limit on the state level, you'll see that Monroe is kind of at, at a, a lower amount, a $1,500 limit. That was the original base amount that was originally uh, in statute. What Mr. Feldman's research indicated was that uh, there was a law that was passed, 
how long ago was that? In the 80s, I think you said? Uh, 1988. That required, that mandated that benefits double whenever your grant list doubles. Um, although Monroe, Monroe's grant list has doubled and almost tripled uh, over a period of time, uh, the state law, the, the timing was which that we, this program was not affected by that. So the law was passed after our grant list increase. So other communities have had that 1500 double and then double again. So you'll see other communities that have, have enjoy a richer overall benefit when you get to the income limitation section where we actually have a local option. So if you want to talk about the, the different local options that you found there and how that plays out, and then the overall, how that plays into the overall picture. Yeah, so if you look at our local option combined with the state option, uh, Monroe offers $8,000, 2,000 of which is reimbursed by the state. This is $8,000 off of the assessed property tax value. So what we wanted to do to, com to kind of not compete, but I guess compete with towns of similar size, um, because our grand list or our um, no income limit hasn't doubled, what we propose on doing is increasing the local option by 2,000 off the um, assessed value, making it 7,000, making the local option $7,000, increasing the total to 10,000, which would put us kind of in the range of some of the towns around us and neighboring communities. So that increase of $2,000 of assessed value would currently affect about 100 veterans that are currently in the program. Uh, and then uh, you want to talk about our recommendation in terms of implementing the Gold Star families and what that exemption would be and translate to. Yeah, so I researched the Gold Star program and I was trying to figure out how many families in Monroe would this implementation of this program actually affect. And it's very hard to judge because most, um, most families aren't forthcoming with this information. Uh, it's more of a private matter. Um, there's some databases we looked at, but in total, based on other towns, how many people they have registered on their programs, we assume that the most Monroe would have at any given time claiming the Gold Star exemption would be three families. Um, so similar towns such as Wilton and Durham have two families currently on their program. So what that equates to in a dollar amount is $700 per family, so anywhere from $1,400 to $2,100 affected uh, towards the town budget. And again, when we, uh, just another point about it, in the, um, you'll see in the, uh, the proposed ordinances that you have before you that um, as per state statute, the Gold Star Family Program does also have an income limitation threshold. That's derived uh, by a, the, the current uh, statutory income limits that are set under the, uh, the, circuit breaker, the circuit breaker program that's available to elderly and totally disabled. Uh, it's those income limits plus $25,000. So there's a little bit more leeway, but there's still uh, some income limitations. Um, I want to make note that uh, Aaron and I and Justin did attend the Board of Finance meeting uh, to run this proposal by them, as obviously relates to their mill rate calculation. Uh, they had uh, no concerns based upon the um, relative dollar amounts we're talking about. They had no concerns, and they gave us a consensus to proceed. Um, they were actually very... Uh, I would say they felt strongly that this was something we should pursue, that it was a relatively small amount to consider given the, uh, given the individuals that we are honoring. Uh, so again, this is the, the earlier sheet we're looking at uh, total, total uh, benefit currently of $8,000, which we would then increase to $10,000. Again, the total exposure for both ordinances is expected to be less than $10,000. Uh, the calculation, again, based upon expanding the first program, uh, assuming the 107 current individuals on that program, uh, equates out to just over $7,500. And as Aaron mentioned earlier, assuming three on the Gold Star program, of just over two grand, again, comes with just under 10,000 if our assumptions are uh, Great. That's it. Let's thank you, Mr. Kellogg and Mr. Squibb. Any um, comments, questions, discussion? Mr. Kellogg? Any conversations with the VFW? I know it's hard to get Gold Star families to uh, come forward, but no, we did. We did have some ad hoc conversations with veterans, with uh, American Legion members. Mm -hmm. uh, I I have had conversations with veterans who have 
approached me as constituents to talk about this, understand you know, the, the nuances of the, what the state program allows without income limits versus this, and explain that we're trying to expand benefits, those benefits that are within our local uh, control and authority. Yeah. Does the, Mr. Mauer, go ahead. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, as uh, the selectmen uh, mentioned, this was discussed at finance. Uh, finance felt strongly, and I agree with them that this uh, is something that uh, we should strongly consider, and uh, they recommended moving forward with a uh, unanimous consensus. Um, and it's one of those opportunities as a councilman when you're not looking at what's going to save the town the most money, you're looking at what's right to do for the town, for the people of the town. and. Uh, this is one of those items that is, in, in my opinion, uh, something that's an honor to be able to vote on and an honor to be able to vote for to support the people of our town who have served our town, our state, our country, uh, both uh, here and overseas. Thank you, Mr. Maurer. Um, anybody else? Uh, Mr. Reed? More of a closing comment. Okay. I have a question. Um, I didn't look at the public act. Uh, does it limit the credit for the gold star only to spouse and parents and not yes. no. children? Correct. Okay. Surviving spouse and surviving parents. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Reed? No, I just want to say this. This young man's very impressive. Mr. Squid did a great job with this. Uh, he's, he's definitely an example of why Massac is one of the top, top schools in the state of Connecticut. Excellent job. Not easy to go up there as a, an adult, let alone a 16, 17, 18 year old kid, you know, it's very impressive. Agreed. Well, I agree. I echo those comments. He's been a pleasure to work with and he hasn't uh, shied away from getting, you know, rolling up his sleeves and uh, parking himself in room 204 all alone, plowing through uh, research and stuff like that. So It's not it's over yet fun. though, Mr. Squid. That's right. We've got yeah, a long, yeah, got a long right. road to go here, so right. we've got to keep up, keep up the good work. The rate we're going though, you know, he's, if he presents in October, he, he could be done. Yeah. <laughs> the rate we're going. I want to just uh, thank the, the council for uh, or the comments to the, at this point for uh, endorsing and supporting our recommendation. I appreciate it. So with that, any further uh, discussion? So with that, I'm going to just ask for a quick uh, consensus to call for a uh, public hearing uh, independently on each of these uh, proposed ordinances. So first we have the um, relief for veterans and surviving spouses. Do I have a consensus? Yes. All the way with yes. consensus. Yes. yes. All right, and second to the gold star, which is proposed Article 10, consensus. Yes. Here. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to call for a uh, public hearing uh, regarding Chapter 470, uh, proposed Article 7, relief for veterans and surviving spouses. I'm going to keep them separate just for uh, housekeeping purposes, so 7.30 p.m. on that one, and I'm going to call for a public hearing on 470, proposed Article 10, which is the gold star exemption at 7.45, and uh, certainly can discuss them presentation wise together, but uh, get opportunity for comments separately. Uh, there is no further business. I just want to, uh, Madam Clerk, if you could just highlight um, the consensus of council to adjourn and move that um, our next meeting, so that it does take place, so the notes, uh, the minutes show that uh, we did move that meeting on a consensus vote, 9-12-18 uh, uh, will be the next meeting. And we will certainly post the adjournment of the regularly scheduled meeting. It will be a special meeting on 9 Second public participation. Would anybody like to participate in the second public participation? All right. Seeing none, I'll close second public participation. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion by Mr. Rooney. Second, Mr. Condon. All those in favor? Motion carries 7 0. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. See you guys on the 12th.